I received a request to solve Walker problem 11.29 and talk through how we're approaching this. In this problem, you're given the equation of motion for a oscillator, and it asks you to do a couple things. Find the maximum kinetic energy of a cart and the maximum force exerted on it by the spring. Now the oscillator has a gen general equation of motion that looks like x of t is equal to the amplitude cosine of omega t plus a phase constant. And our problem says that x of t is equal to 10 centimeters times the cosine of 2 rad per second times t plus pi. And the key to doing all of these problems is to make associations between the generic form of the equation and the numbers that you see in front of terms here in the given equation. We can look at the number in front of the trig term, and since it's position, we make the association between this 10 centimeters and the amplitude. For the angular frequency, we make the association between the number in front of the time variable t and this 2 radians per second. And finally, we can make the association between the phase constant phi naught and this pi. First, the phase constant doesn't really matter. We have all of these problems, and even this trig term here, cosine or trig function, could be a sine or whatever. The phase function doesn't matter for anything except for figuring out the specific positions, velocities, or accelerations at specific times. Every other problem, we only care about what the amplitude and the angular frequency are doing. To figure out the maximum kinetic energy of the cart, I'm just going to say that that is going to be 1 half m times the maximum of the speed. So 1 half m v max squared. So this will be when it's going through equilibrium, its speed will be at a maximum. If we look back at our notes, we see that for a simple harmonic oscillator, the maximum speed has the form a times omega. So it's the amplitude times the angular frequency. So we can just go ahead and write down that the kinetic energy is 1 half m times v max. And, and uh, v max has a, ampli uh, a omega quantity squared. And so I just go ahead and I write down that that's 1 half m a squared omega squared and plug in my values. So that's 1 half times 0 0.84 kilograms times the amplitude, which is 0 0.1 centimeters squared, times the omega squared, which is equal to 2 rad per second squared. If I plug all of that in, I get 0 0.0168 joules, which is the answer that we're looking for. So the key point here is I just looked at the equations and made associations between the generic form of those variables and uh, the numbers in the equation. And the phase constant really didn't enter into it. For the maximum force, I have to go all the way back to Hooke's law. I know that for Hooke's law, that's F is equal to minus K times X minus X naught. Now we know that this term, x minus x naught, represents the distance from the equilibrium position of the spring. But the maximum distance that that will ever be is just the amplitude of the oscillator. So I'm going to actually say that this expression here is going to be replaced with the amplitude. I'm also going to go ahead and stick a minus sign on it for the value when this cosine is equal to negative 1 because I want to get rid of the minus sign in Hooke's Law and just get a maximum force. And that's k times a. Well, what is k? We really don't know that right away, but one other thing that I always have in harmonic oscillators is that that angular frequency is root k over m. So we go ahead and we can square both sides of this and multiply up by the m, so omega squared 
is k on m, and then multiply up by that m, and I have an expression for what the spring constant is, m omega squared. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and plug in that f is equal to m omega squared times the uh, amplitude, which is given in the book. So m omega squared a, m here is going to be 0 0.84 kilograms. The omega is the two radians per second. Well, where'd that come from? Again, just reading it out of the expression that's given to us, squared. And then the amplitude is 0 0.1 meters. And then if I multiply that all out, I get 0 0.336 newtons. And that is how you approach this.